If you have listened to the Content is Profit podcast, you know how important was focus for us in 2020. So we're bringing back one of our first episodes with amazing guest, Jerry McNamara. He's our great friend and one of our mentors. And we're bringing it to you because he's about to drop a webinar on how to outperform the market by building an accountable culture that sticks to deadlines and crushes objectives so you can focus on steering the ship instead of hurting cats. So please go listen to this episode, share with us what you learned from Jerry, and don't forget to go sign up for his webinar, provenchaos.com, because he is going to rock your world. Let's go. We've got some hey, I'm Luis. Doing some and I'm that I Luis. You and you're before. listening to the One, Content two, is Profit three. podcast. We spent the last four years learning the strategies and techniques from some of the top marketers in the world on how to turn your content into profit. If you'd like to learn more about how to turn your content into profit, go to contentisprofit.com. Oh, yeah. All right. Guys, today we're talking about the person every CEO needs by their side. A hundred percent. So excited. Yeah, if you are a CEO right now listening to the show, please go ahead and stay tuned because like this is a guy that you need there. But before we get started, please go ahead and subscribe to the show. Hit and smash that subscribe button. Um, follow All us on social right. media. We actually go live and record this show live in front of an awesome audience every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So please follow us at the Biz Bros Go. But if you cannot make live, just subscribe, and you are uh, we're gonna be there in your podcast platform. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Hi, right, Fonzie. Oh, that's I me. Think it's okay. about time we introduce. Woo! Yeah, I think it's about time we introduce our guest. All right. So today's guest is a very dear friend, mentor, and guide. But it wasn't until like. But it wasn't always like that, you know? I first met him at a fitness studios and I could not I could not keep up with his energy. Like that was insane. Like he would come in like at 6 a.m. or 5 a.m., 5.45, and he would just inundate the room with energy. And uh, he's a guy who turns good days into amazing days. More on that later. He is currently on a mission to help CEOs accelerate. What does that mean? We'll find out very soon. His resume is impressive. Franchise 500, two times. Inc. Fastest Growing Private Companies, two times. Business Journals, Fast 50, three times, and so much more. Introducing the CEO's go-to, the business energizing bunny, <laughs> and most importantly, the parent, um, pre- the present dad and loving husband, Mr. Mr. Jerry, Jerry. McNamara. <laughs> Jerry, where are you? Where are you? <laughs> Bam. Welcome, Jerry. We're so excited. (laughs) We're so excited to have you. Oh, man, it's Monday, and it was a rough one today. But it's good. We have you in here. (laughs) Listen, um, the only one that's given me a better introduction uh, than that is my mother. So thank you so much. Uh, Incredibly (laughs) kind words. And, um, you know, know, Luis, I know you have a, a young, young one. Fonzie, you don't have one yet, but just wait until you turn into uh, a consultant, a second grade teacher, and a preschool teacher all overnight. All overnight. Uh, Mondays take on new meaning. I mean, talk, talk about adapting <laughs> and talk about, you know, pivoting and, and, you know, just adding value to anybody's life. I mean, that's insane. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, for by, sure. by the way, um, when I see you next, I'm, I'm getting one of those. It's Monday, baby. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, we yeah. we get a. I, I think like people are like have been like loving this, like have been loving this shirt, and it's not ours. Like to, like our shirt is like Steve Larson, and you know we we owe a ton to this guy, and obviously, we have to like reach out and be like, hey, can you make some Biz Bros, uh, you know, branded? It's Monday, baby, and you know we'll we'll spread the word. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, when when, uh, when you love what you do, it's wonderful to be on Monday. Um, in this current environment, it's interesting because the only time I know what day it is, is when it's Saturday and Sunday and I don't have to turn in assignments for my daughter. <laughs> That's amazing. Hey, Otherwise, it's just Blur's day. That's right. It's any, any other. 
<laughs> hey, Jerry, so, like, well, let, let's give some background to, to the audience here. Like, we met maybe a couple of years back uh, in the fitness studio, and I remember, like, you coming into, like, this place, 5 a.m., 6 a.m., like, multiple... It, like it changed just a, a tiny bit, but it was like super early, right? And I remember just being there, trying to be all energetic. And then there you go, you walk <laughs> in, and it's just like this hurricane of energy that early in the morning. And I remember one day, like you were walking out, and I'm like, "Hey, Jerry, you know, have a good day." And and you just like stopped and turn around, you know. I mean, like, why good? Have a great day, man. Have an amazing day. And then That's you walked right. out, and wow, what an impression you made. So so. Do you want to tell the audience a little bit, like why, like why that mindset, and like why so early yeah. in the morning? Yeah, like, where, where, where so, does it come from, right? So um, it comes from a choice that I make, right? And so it's so important because I think, you know, I actually wrote an article about um, having good, having a good day, and that becomes your default state. So you know, you guys work on computers all day long. Yeah. How many people? don't change how fast their mouse moves for them. How many people don't change keystrokes, but any of those things, and they just leave in a default state. So somewhere along the way, someone told you to have a good day, and you just adopted that, that good was good enough. And I believe that I only live once. I want to have a great day every day. And so, you know, it goes further than that, because I believe you control your mind, your mind doesn't control you. And so it's literally a choice you make. Life is a choice that you make and it's connected to your vision and your values. And I think <clears throat> if you can take clarity of your vision, your values and your actions, you unlock fulfillment. And to me, that's the highest um, joy, the highest purpose of life, that you are living your life on your terms. And so I hate when we just accept defaulted answers as the status quo of how we live our life. And so I have a very deep connection to my values. Um, you know, love my people is my very first value, right? And so um, I'm a big believer in morning routines, which is why getting into the studio, I've already been up for an hour and a half by the time I get into the studio, because I get up at four o'clock. And I realize that that's like an outlier. But if you do like a lot of research, um, the highest performers in the world all get up early. Yeah. I, I, I'm, uh, I don't have to reinvent the wheel. <laughs> I am right. absolutely willing to learn from people who have been way more successful than I'll ever be and um, to do that. But I think um, it's something that my mom shared with me. She said, um, um, smile and the world smiles with you or cry, cry alone. Right. And it's that yeah. whole internal locus of control that I am in control of my day. Right. And so you can either be Buzz Lightyear or you can be Eeyore. Do you want to be the <laughs> sad sack? Because sad sacks don't change the world. Buzz Lightyear, he may fall, he may break a wing. Right. But he's yeah. the guy that's going to go change the world. Who are the people that you really enjoy being around? It's the people trying to do yeah. audacious things. So go for it. Amazing. Love it. Yeah, I, no, I, 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 love, love it. Uh, I, I love that explanation, especially when you brought Buzz Lightyear. I mean, you definitely are a dad. I mean, we can confirm <laughs> that now. <laughs> right. 100%. No, 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 no doubt. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I just, I think sometimes people give into this thing. I mean, we're in a great scenario right now in the coronavirus, right? The world is happening to me. Those people are operating from fear. If it's, yeah. hey, this situation is happening, but what can I control? Let me own my attitude, my approach. Let me learn my skill building because the economy will reopen. Uh, I was just advising a CEO last week. I said the first question that I would be asking any candidate that I was considering hiring is how did you use your time during this break to build your skills and become more valuable? That's amazing. I, I, I think yeah. that says a lot from that, that person, right? Because like if they did nothing right and just waited, is that really the person that you want to bring into your team? 
uh, or is that, you know, really a person that you want to be around? So that's amazing. So Jerry, like, just so like people have a little bit of background, like who, who's Jerry McNamara? Like, how does this start it where, uh, do you, obviously you have an amazing resume and you, you help very, very, very powerful people and super cool people. Like, how do you get there? Like how, like, where do you start? Like, what are these well, things that happened? And I know like it might be super long, but like, what's the, what's maybe a quick version that we can, you know, uh, bring people up sure, to for with sure. this thing? So, so first of all, one of the things that I believe is I stand on the shoulders of giants. I've never done anything by myself. And so anyone who says they're a self-made man, they're full of crap because we all stand on the shoulders of other people who cared about us and loved us and mentored us and did all of those things. So um, first of all, I've never done anything alone. And I acknowledge that in, I'm the first person to raise my hand and be incredibly grateful for all those people who trusted me and invested in me, um, you know, to try and make sure that I was successful. That's awesome. Um, so just, you know, quick resume. I was able to help run a uh, soccer retail company. We went from um, one store to 35 stores. We were in 13 states. Mm -hmm. At one point in time, we went from 5.9 million to 15 million in 18 months. That's when I fell in love with um, the acceleration of business and drinking from the fire hose. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, we broke that company off and sold it off. I then went to Toronto and consulted to an apparel manufacturer in Toronto for two years, helped them grow their sales, <clears throat> came back to the US, um, started an e-commerce company selling the company who I was working with in Toronto, selling their um, uniforms. And uh, we basically vertically integrated that business. He was the uh, manufacturing arm and I was the sales and marketing arm, right? Which was really successful. Yeah. And then, um, um, sold that business to, uh, to him and then ran a construction business. And we took that from 7 million to 30 million in three years. Um, and then I've been helping businesses, um, operate and consult to them, um, you know, for the last number of years, I think the important piece, you know, as I tell people this story, I've been in B2B, I've been in B2C, I've been in multiple different industries, and what I've learned is, um, and I think it's part of your thesis, and so that's why I bring it up, business is about frameworks. Frameworks allow you to create um, automations, to replicate success again and again, a lens by which to look and say, here's where I am, here's where I need to go, here's what's broken, here's what I need to fix. Yeah. And so... I've never been the technical leader, yet I've been able to create some level of success in, in a number of different businesses. And it's just the discipline of being super focused um, because entrepreneurs, as you guys know this, I think when we first met um, and you guys were figuring out like what your market niche was going to be, you can't be all things to all people. And so uh, I, I had to do my first uh, strategic plan with a company via Zoom. And so there's, you know, 10 people on the call. <clears throat> we did it over a day and a half. And, you know, the CEO and I were, were going back and forth because there were a number of opportunities that they were trying to capitalize on their business. Yeah. And I said, we can't do it all at once. And I said, the reason why I think um, companies have uh, hired me and we've created success is because we've been incredibly focused on what it is our approach is going to be and that we can't get it all done. And, you know, sometimes people don't want to hear that, but um, that's how you accelerate businesses. I love it. Yeah. I, I <laughs> That's so funny that you mentioned that story because uh, I remember that perfectly, you know, that day <laughs> that we went to your house and you're like, yeah, tell me a little bit of what you guys are currently <laughs> doing, right? And we were like, yeah, we're going to be this social media marketing agency and we're gonna you know like we're gonna go to a business and whatever the problem is we're gonna solve it and you literally it felt <laughs> like you have one of those like uh silicone gloves you know the plastic gloves and you took it like whoop, whoop, slowly and just like slap Slap us across the it. face <laughs> and you're like no you gotta focus right and yeah. and i mean it was uh it was an amazing lesson indeed um how's it working out for you Fonzie, it has it gotten amazing. way better, yeah, way <laughs> better, right? Yeah. And I, I still think, you know, that it's like, okay, how can we even get even more focused, right? And But it's been an amazing experience because I think it's probably one of the most important lessons that we've learned in this journey of entrepreneurship. That is like well, you need to focus on the one thing. And, and, it, and it's a great point because 
you know, entrepreneurs are much um, always uh, likened to squirrels who chase the shiny object, like oh, from yeah. thing to thing to thing. And the reality of it is, you know this, it takes a focused effort to create success. And certainly when you're when you're starting your business, there is some latitude to say, like, I got to try some stuff because I don't know what's going to work. Exactly. Um, and so, yeah, there's a testing approach to that. But at the same time, it, it is not a sustainable, like, a dabble in this for two weeks, dabble in that for two weeks. You'll never really understand whether you could have been successful in it or not. Yeah, no, I love it because uh, yeah. I mean, just bringing that to to the content side, right? Like we we always do our best to connect the content into the profit side of the business, and if there's no sales process or anything or like a framework, right, like that we talk mm -hmm. about so many so many times, uh, you're not gonna see that connection. You're not gonna see the results. And I was just on a phone call. Uh, we do these things called called uh, publishing frameworks, and it's basically give uh, helping the client get clarity on their publishing framework just like the title says right and it's like okay how many times i what's the consistency what do i say like i don't i don't even know so there's there's so much information out there in the world that just like okay how can i adapt that to myself and uh so she was like okay after six days of going live i actually made an offer and that was it like i'm just gonna do that and then she got her first four clients and then immediately after she tied down the sales the another sales process and she was able to close a four thousand dollar client a high ticket client just by following that framework that you mentioned that is so important right so right. so for somebody that it's uh that it's starting right now because when we talk about content is obviously the beginning of your marketing the beginning of, of your sale uh but there is always has to be tied down to that side of business and that's why i love so much that you are here with us today it's like somebody that's starting up like you know like this person what is the number one advice other than that like you have to really focus on like that one thing that one process after that what comes what comes next mm. so it's interesting because i've started to write a little bit about this louise about um, almost business boot camp. Like, what's your boot camp 101? And I think, um, at least for me, when I'm advising people, you know, it starts with your values because your values are your rules of engagement, not only for your employees, but it's the promises that you're making to your customers. And yeah. so um, that's critically important. Over the course of my life, I would tell you my vision has changed. My why has changed. I, I got a wife. I have kids. There's, there's, you know, there's things that, that, um, just move that further down the road. Right. Yeah. But my values are very enduring, right? That's my approach to life. And I think if anyone is you know watching that knows me for my whole life, um, you know, they would say, yeah, it's, it's he's been the same guy for a, a very long time. <laughs> um, so I always say like, come back to your why. I think when I speak to people and they're either not as successful as they want or um, they're disillusioned by their business, I ask them, why did you start your business? And most times they can't give me an answer. They've become so disconnected that they're like a leaf blowing in the wind. And so wow. you have to be really fully connected to your vision and your values. That's the start. And then, you know, the tactics those change all the time, right? So we're testing this, we're testing that. That didn't work. I learned that forward. Um, you know, but entrepreneurship is not easy. Um, I think we all kind of glorify um, what entrepreneurship is. I've gotten my teeth bashed in a million times. <laughs> and so, you know, one of the things that I think is critically important is sharing with other people. You know, in 2011, I, I wrote about my biggest business mistake, and you guys have made a tremendous investment in this area, um, was that I didn't have a business mentor, a business coach, or a business roundtable. Because you don't have to do life alone. You don't have to do business alone. Yeah. But it's our ego that gets in the way of us um, asking for help, right? Thinking that we're gonna, we're gonna conquer the world. Um, my life has always gotten infinitely better when I uh, ask for help. In fact, it's my it's my um, favorite thing that I do in business because I just say, Luis, Fonzie, I need your help. Yeah. And what do you say? 
here we go, Jerry. Let's go get Florida Jusen Bowl right. and tackle the problem. Tackle the problem. Right. <laughs> how, how can I help? Yep. Right? And yeah. so now two is better than one, and we're able to, you know, figure things out together. And so um, I would advise people to get really connected to their vision and values, um, to get comfortable that you're going to get your teeth bashed in. You know, entrepreneurship <laughs> is not like Facebook. We, yep. we don't get to just show all the wonderful stuff um, yeah. that's going on. And, you know, be willing to take risks. Um, I think, you know, I tell people all the time, don't just stay in the middle of the road because the only thing you find in the middle of the road are dead animals. <laughs> so get left, get right, pick yeah. a path. Um, and I think it's really important right now. I mean, if you're looking at your business, right, and you're getting started and you're a me too business, right, which means... I don't know. I'm going to give an, an example in the restaurant industry. If you're Red Robin and TGI Fridays and I mean, there's so much sameness there. Why does the consumer choose you? Yeah. Right. And so if you're not differentiated, you're probably not getting people's vote and they're going to vote with their, their pocketbook. Right. And so um, be really I hate me too businesses like <laughs> with a passion. Um but I think that's those are the first things that I would be talking to people about. Vision, values, get willing to uh, get your teeth bashed in, take some risks, and make sure you're differentiated. I love it. Yeah, no, I I love Owens, and I think especially the sharing with others, right? Like that has been a point that I think we have covered lately with a few other entrepreneurs that have been in the show. We've talked about vulnerability, right? And the fact that you said asking yeah. for help, I remember again another story with you right like last time you invited us over to your house that you wanted to discuss you know certain projects i remember when we stepped out of it and i told my brother i'm like dude i'm like i'm so grateful and at the same time excited you know that someone with the resume that jerry has right like all this big accomplishment like he's asking for our, our help Mm -hmm. And uh, for me, for me, that was mind blowing. I was like, wow, that is yeah. so cool. You know, like how humble this guy and not only that, like willing, like you can clearly see that you live on the values of like, I can learn from anybody. Anyone. I can learn something from anybody. And for me, that was mind blowing because at that point I was, you know, I mean, I, I, I believe as well that we can learn something from everybody, but I was always looking up right like all these people mm. uh like big time players right when maybe i can learn something super important looking i mean not down but maybe so looking fun, in the same so direction fun. let me just jump in on that right so i don't yeah. um in in my life i don't uh stratify people right and so everyone has different roles we just we just have different um roles and opportunities that we fulfill mm -hmm. and so you know it's the same thing with accountability Right? When, I, when I run organizations, um, I believe highly accountable organizations that execute are the ones that win and unlock the lion's share of rewards in, in, in the marketplace. One of the things that I believe really deeply is, um, and I think I shared this with you guys, that I'm, I'm trying to complete a book. My, keep, my wife keeps on asking me where it's at, where it's at. <laughs> um, and so it, it's coming. It's coming. Um, you guys will appreciate this. It, it's like <clears throat> it's like um, pushing a dirty peanut across a uh, bar floor at 2 a.m. That's what it's like <laughs> trying to um, finish right certain things. Anyway, yeah. so principle four is intellectual curiosity, right? So we can have yeah. this vision, we can have the values, but if we don't have the skills to execute on it, then you're sunk. So you have to be intellectually curious. It's single-handedly um, why I have been able to be successful. Because I've not been the technical leader, but I've been intellectually curious as I walk into every business to learn their business and then apply foundational principles on top of their business so that we have the discipline, the focus, and the systems to execute. And then suddenly the business spins up. Yeah. It's like, wow, right? Yeah. 
No, I love it because like you, you keep talking about principles, you know, about some th those frameworks that can really be applied anywhere. And, uh, you know, as, as content creators, sometimes we get so fixated in like the latest trends, the latest like uh, tactics on how to do this and how to do that. And a lot of people find that friction, like it, it, it's like a wall, like they can't get through. And then for that, because of that reason, then their message is not able to get out to their audience. And then they're, you know, They, they cannot add the value that they can, they, that they could otherwise, right? Um, so thank you for bringing that. And it's, it's you know, major yeah. picture in the business and, and you work with like amazing, massive companies. And it, those are things that everybody can really apply, right? Uh, at any level. And uh, and the growth that they could experience after that, it, it's, it's amazing. So uh, I, I would tell you, it's even more important as your company is starting to instill those disciplines Because as you start to accelerate, that's when you get exposed. Yeah. And so if you have those disciplines to start with, that it's systems and process, and do I have the tens in my organization, not the sixes and sevens that most people you know hire because they're a little less expensive, go hire the tens. Um, I mean, that, that's how you um, do things better and better and better. That's awesome. Did you ever have... I mean, a lot of the things that we talk to are, you know, obviously the, the, the fear of being judged out there or, the, or at the end of the day, it's like the fear of, of failure. And, you know, you mentioned earlier, it's like you're going to get hit in the face, right? You're going to lose some mm -hmm. teeth sometimes. You're going to like, mm -hmm. it's not going to be pretty. And like, and we've lived it, you know, I mean, if Fonzie opened his mouth, you could tell there there's like no teeth at all. So, you know, he just <laughs> takes it. But, um, so do you ever, like, do you remember like maybe like one moment that he was like, oh my gosh, like I'm like, this, this is it. Like, I'm not going to continue this journey. And if you had that moment, like, what was it and what made you continue? So, first of all, I think ego is the enemy. So just start there. Yeah. Ego is the enemy. And anytime you start asking, how does this reflect on me instead of how does this reflect on the business that I, I'm a steward of, then then you're, you've done the wrong thing, right? And so every company that I've led and been in charge of, I speak about ego and that um, I have failed you as leader if I haven't connected you to our mission and how we approach uh, the business. Yeah. Failure is perfectly okay. So when you change your mind about what failure is, failure is a terminal condition. So to me, it's, it's your first attempt in learning. Okay, I know that didn't work, so therefore I'm gonna try something else. Mm -hmm. And so um, I don't mind at all the idea that finding out what didn't work didn't work. And so, you know, coming back to if you're in a business boot camp, being really attached to your vision and your values is super critical because that's what drives your action. How bad yeah. do you want it? Because if you don't want it that bad and you're not truly connected to them, then you're not being driven by it. And so regroup. Entrepreneurship isn't for everyone. And so, you know, if you're not willing to take those risks and to fail, then maybe, you know, maybe you shouldn't um, start a business. And that's okay. Yeah. And I, I want to add something to what you just said, right? You said, um, I, I think it's about also adding a little bit of perspective because it's, some people are afraid of failing, right? And then when they fail, they are like, oh, I invested all this time in all this and now I have to start all over again. When maybe you can say, Wow, like good. That didn't work. One less thing. I'm one step closer to where I want to be, right? Um, so I, I think it, it comes back to mindset in a, in a lot of people and how they tackle all these problems. When when you win the mind, you win the day. End of story. And, and I, I cannot emphasize that enough. Love is a choice you make. My daughter and my son both know. I asked them, are you going to choose to have a good day today? Because they recognize <laughs> it's their choice. Right. And so, yes, I'm programming a three year old and a seven year old to That's take awesome. stewardship and ownership that they are impacting the world, that it's not the world impacting them. And so, you know, like I was on another podcast and I was asked this question about fear of failure. I don't buy into it because you know what? I, you know what I'm fearful of being 75 years old, being on a hospital bed and thinking, shit, I could have picked up the bat and been Babe Ruth. 
and I decided to sit on the bench. That scares the shit out of me. Yep. Right? And so, but that's me. Um, and so, yeah, I'm going to take swings and I'm going to go for it because, I don't know, I, I, I want people to show up to my funeral. Right? So this is perspective, Fonzie. I want people to show up to my funeral and tell my kids, you know what, your dad is a loving person. He left me in a better place than I was when I met him. And um, he took some risks. Some of them worked out. Some of them didn't. But he left me in a better place, personally. We're definitely going to so, say that in your funeral, for sure. Like, we are. Just just so you know. Say that again? <laughs> We're definitely going to say that, you know, in your funeral, funeral <laughs> for sure. You left us um, in a better thank, place. Uh, thank you. <laughs> I, I, but, but, but like, here, here's the point. Yeah. I think, um, I think people have visions of the world they want to create, but they're unwilling to take the action. And so then they leave it to chance. Yeah. And so when I look at businesses, I think about like in the supply chain of delivering your product or service, where can I take chance out of the process? And you do that with, you know, intellectual curiosity, which means you have great training. You are hiring the right people because they are intellectually curious too. Anyway, I mean, having learning organizations, I believe in that like with my whole core, um, having learning organizations win over time because they evolve. If you're trying to solve today's problems with yesterday's knowledge, you are done because it's probably not yesterday's knowledge. It's probably 10 years ago's knowledge. Yeah, no, that that is true. I, I, the thing that you just mentioned right now that you were talking about why you, your real fear is looking at your deathbed, right? And having those regrets. And it reminds me, you just mentioned as well, ego is the enemy, right? And I mean, there's this author called Ryan Holiday. He actually wrote a book called Ego is the it's Enemy. One my, it's one of my favorite books. He's one of my favorite guys. Yeah. I, I think I sent I think I sent Luis. He did he started Daily Dad. Yep. yep. Oh, really? Yep. That, uh, it's like it, a two two minute inspiration. I I love it. I shared it with uh, a number of dads. It's like I love little, that. Awesome. Little nuggets. So yeah, amazing. I mean, yeah. I mean, he he's huge on, on stoicism, right? And those philosophers are known for actually thinking about mortality, like that big picture. You know, like what is people gonna say pretty much yeah. when I'm dead, or what am I gonna be thinking in my deathbed? I'll give you the, the further backstory on this, right? Yeah. So I'm a junior in high school. And I'm such a nerd that I was reading three newspapers a day. Um, and so I was reading the Wall Street Journal. I, re I remember this vividly. I was, in the, uh, in the, um, I was in the library in my high school. And the Wall Street Journal used to have this right column they, they would run. And uh, I remember reading it. And the, 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 the author basically said, by virtue of living, you're bound to leave an inheritance, even if it's a nickel. But what will your legacy be? And so to me, that's how I've lived my life. Because I just thought, huh, I can't control what people are going to say about me. But I can leave them clues. I can leave them stories. I can, like, what's the story that someone's going to tell? Yeah. I hope you leave yeah. good stories. I certainly, and, to, you know, to be fair, I have lots of times that I have messed up in my career. And, you know, I, I try and be the guy that raises his hand and say, I messed up in that situation. I, but I've missed the mark a million times for sure. I've missed it, you know, in, both in my decision making and in my relationships. Um, and so, you know, by far, I am not perfect. I don't want to, you know, portray that, right? But yeah, I've always been in that mindset of like, what's your legacy going to look like over time? Yeah, yeah, I, and I think it's good, you know, bringing that up to the failures and recognizing that you've had failed throughout your journey. So, like people that are listening to this that are like oh like it all sounds so perfect it's like no like even though they're failures like you're keeping that mentality right like not only staying positive but like looking at the big picture and the other thing that i wanted to come back to was the kid story because even before <laughs> i met you jerry i remember this story of my brother that my brother told me that i was <laughs> cracking up he's like yeah. Dude, I went, I went to have lunch at Jerry's and talked to him, and I, okay, I, I don't remember the exact story. I remember obviously the big picture. So, Luis Daniel, you, right. yeah, I'm gonna give you, hand you the mic. Tell I, the, the yeah, story. it wasn't, it wasn't lunch. Like I remember, like we we live in this place where like it's uh, we have we have a beach, right? So we we're out there uh, sharing with people from the studio, a couple coaches, 
And I remember where like we had different beach games and uh, there was one that we had to throw a ball. And I remember oh, yeah. catching the ball <laughs> and uh, Brooke comes to me, you know, she's like, I don't know, I can't remember how old she was, but like, she was so tiny. And she's like, look at me. Right? I'm like, wait, wait, what? And I'm looking down and she's like, yeah, look at my eyes. You can do this. You can <laughs> do this. And I'm like, and she's like, repeat with me. And I'm like, you can do it. And I'm like, she's like, this like seven year old just like pumping me out. I'm like, this is amazing. Like, and I, and uh, at that point, like we weren't these close of friends. Like, and uh, you know, we just like we met each other, and that's it. And I'm like, sure. wow, this is amazing. And uh, I just want to be close to that guy because if he raises his kids to be that way when they're well, so that let me, old, let me just hit, let me let me interrupt you. Um, you know my wife. Yes. <laughs> okay. So. Um, you don't get a better person than Rachel. You don't get a more, I call it BO, Horns Optimism. But, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. And so there is not a challenge that that woman um, doesn't take on or thinks she can overcome. And even if she doesn't, it's still okay and on to the next thing. So um, while I appreciate it and I certainly try and do my part, uh, that's Rachel. Well, I, I hope she does listen to this episode and, you know, just yeah. know that you guys have a special, like, place in our heart just because of that story. That's it. That's every, no. that's how everything started. But, but yeah, yeah I'm like, much. wow, like, it, it's incredible, like, how, like, we can build this into, like, the kids. And you see, like, so many people out there and uh, not just with, like, kids that, that don't have that north or don't have that attitude towards different challenges or, or different situations in life. But even like the people that, that we help or the, the potential clients that outside, they might seem very successful. Then as soon as you start like peeling, you know, the, the those layers, you start discovering yep. a lot of issues that maybe started so long ago. And at the end of the day, we use content as a vehicle, right, to maybe work on some personal development because it's incredible. As soon as you start publishing, all these monsters are going to come back to you, right? And right now, we're we're living in a world where transparency is is a thing. Like, we have to accept that we have to be transparent. We have to be honest. And uh, and if you want to connect with your audience at a different level, you're going to have to do these things that maybe you, you don't like, but you're going to grow so much because you're going to tap into this, like, personal development, growth, uh, different aspects of of that's only going to make you better. And I believe that a lot of people are very scared of that. We were massively scared. We were like freaked out uh, before we even started publishing. And we have different stories where like, you know, if I say this, right, if I show that we're building this, that uh, we're following our dream, a lot of people are going to be like really like mad at us because we actually have the opportunity. And it wasn't until somebody actually said the words like, what if like you're that person that actually motivates them to take the next level, like take it, to the mm -hmm. next level take it to the next step what if you're that person so it's amazing that you know you're touching this on the business side but um i f i feel like a lot of people have to like listen to that because their audiences are waiting for that right their clients are waiting for that so i, I think it's i think it's up. critical and what, and what you're talking about and i'm, I'm going to wrap back around to my kids because i think it's it's critical what you're um discussing I, it takes a village it takes a community to be successful. And so it's not just Rachel and I, it's all of the people who have invested in us to love my kids the way in which I, I and I mean, there's so many of them, it's incredible. And it, yeah. what you're talking about is using content for attraction and value to build a community based around shared values and shared interests so that it's like, this is my tribe, these are my people. And together we elevate, right? And so you may be the match that starts the fire, but you don't have to be all the firewood. And so I think that's the piece that people forget in, in all of this. Like Rachel and I are blessed to have Briggs in Brooklyn, but we're not the only ones responsible for them or raising them. They're teachers, yeah. have incredible teachers. And um, I think what you're doing with content is much like what we're doing with our kids, right? We we open them up. Um, we made a very conscious choice when Brooklyn was born. We handed her to every person because we wanted her to get used to being held by lots of people and not being scared by people. Yeah. It's the same way. When you start sharing your message, Brooklyn was our message, right? Yeah. You start sharing your message, a little scary, right? <laughs> She was never really yeah. dropped, but 
um, you know, someone's going to tell you your content is fat and it's ugly and it's, you know, it's got hair in the wrong places and its eyes are crossed, but, but that content is beautiful to you. Oh yeah. Right. And so, um, that's a, okay. F find the people who really, um, joy had take joy and appreciate your content. I love it. Yeah, I agree. I, I think honestly, it gets to a point where you see content. I, I, I feel like this is how we see it right now, right? It, we see it as a filter and it's building those communities, right? It's going to attract the people that you want to hang out with, to share stories with, to listen to their stories. You know, like you said, create a community and it's going to repel the people that you don't really want to work with. And again, that, going that's why back I'm going to come back to uh, sorry, I'm going to come back to, and you may be going to this, but um, it's why values are central to your success. Because if you don't stand for anything, then you're never going to resonate with people. Yeah. That's why I say pick your position, right? It's going to be, some people yeah. are going to hate it. That's okay. Yeah. It's yeah. Gonna, it's going to happen That's once true. you receive um, that permission. It's like, okay, it's going to happen. Uh, then you can just be prepared and be like, okay, now I can have a plan on how I'm going to deal with that and move on and just stack the positives because I'm helping a ton of people too. People listening Correct. to my message. Yeah. I was going to, I was going to circle back a little bit to where at first writing our story, we wanted to be a jack of all trades and do everything for everybody. And with, without problem you don't we didn't have a message at that point so it, we thought that was like the rational thing to do but as you start publishing you start creating that message and connecting with people and you realize you cannot do anything because the people you are connecting with you're going to be able to help them with one thing that is your message that you're putting out there um i i agree i shot a video and i chose not to um share it and it was Uh, the things that I've learned about becoming a second grade teacher. <laughs> um, and so one of the things that I've thought about is that when you really think about the most successful people, they're not well-rounded people. Well-rounded people are good at a number of things. People who are world-class are great at one thing. And so um, it's one of the things yeah. that I've thought about my, My daughter doesn't like math. No, she's in second grade. So there's there's foundational things. She's actually very good at math. But if she if if there was a subject that she didn't like, why do we spend all this time remediating beyond the foundational elements to make you learn something that you're not going to use and you don't love? Right? I'd rather reallocate yeah. that time for someone to be really great at something that they loved because you know what? They're going to be passionate about it. And so actually on the Daily Dad this morning, it was how to get kids to read. Get them to read something that they love and all of a sudden they foster like this love of reading. Well, exactly. you know, don't, don't give them these esoteric novels that you're going <laughs> to pull meaning out of. Give them something, whatever they want to read. And that they may love that, but um, I, I just think that's really important. I love it. So to, to wrap things yeah. up a little bit, uh, well, first we got to stop. Well, not yet, but I have a couple more <laughs> questions. Um, we can do we can do part two. It's fine. You know, yeah, we, we're gonna have to. Bring I'm sure. I'm sure the audience sure. is gonna be like, yeah, we want part two of every guest because like we've had we've been in this position with everybody. Like, oh my god, we we can't continue like forever. But you, just for the sake of editing on the team, we we have to kind of wrap the things up. But just tell us a little bit like where <laughs> where are you now? Um, mm -hmm. with, with your business, because you are an entrepreneur now and you know, you're, you're creating this amazing, uh, thing. And then after that, what's a, a, a good action point that you want to leave our, our audience with? Mm. So what am I doing right now? I am helping, uh, CEOs and owners accelerate their business. And I say with fewer headaches, right? We're still going to have headaches, but they're going to be fewer. <laughs> yes. Um, There's never an entrepreneur that I've met that, that, that says, oh, um, I'm okay with where my business is. They're always looking to iterate and invent and innovate, um, you know, to the next level. And so that's what I love doing. I call it drinking from the fire hydrant is just that whole notion yeah. of how do you challenge and tackle the biggest business problems? Um, as you might imagine, this environment has been um, 
super interesting for me. I, I've gotten to speak to uh, just over 70 companies uh, in the last 60 days. You know, some just a phone call, right? Um, people just trying to figure it out. Um, some some engagements out of that, but um, you know, you can go see me at provenchaos.com. If you want to read some of my previous um, writings, you can go to jerrymactamira.com. I've written about lots of different things. Um, most of them are about, in my uh, view, how to live a great life and how to perform at levels that you never thought you could. And so, um, you know, that's what I'm doing right now. That's awesome. And so, and guys, please, please go ahead and check him out, provingchaos.com. Uh, amazing. Also, one of his blog posts, I, I remember this making or being a, a making a big impression on me is like that one day that you almost died. You had like this big cut like in your neck and I'm like, what the heck just happened? So that read alone was amazing. And it, it, it like it, it brought so much like clarity and just the way that, that you put that story uh, to work for your audience was amazing. So uh, thank you for sharing that crazy moment, I guess. Um, so what is, <laughs> what's, um, what's a good action point? You know, if you want to leave with one thing, to like to our audience like what what's that one thing um be intellectually curious and don't be afraid to fail if you're going to be an entrepreneur if you're going to be an entrepreneur you have to be intellectually curious you have to suspend your own um beliefs you know my, my favorite morning intention every day is to live in wonder not in judgment and i think that's particularly important so i'm going to rant for half a second Um, as you know, go figure. I like to talk. Um, love it. Love it. But just like, you Fonzie. know, <laughs> um, Chris Voss, who was the lead hostage negotiator for the FBI wrote a book, never split the difference. Amazing book. Yes. Amazing book. Right. So he talks about black swans and black swans are pieces of information or situations that are happening that don't match up with your experience, your previous experiences or your success frameworks. And I'm going to tell you, in this environment that we're in, you have to look for the black swans because the world has changed. And if you're not paying attention to the gaps that are getting created, when someone says something that, that makes you say, that's crazy, pay attention because that may be the new normal. That may be the pivot you're looking for. And so stop relying on what your previous frameworks were because the world's changed. And so you got to start pay, paying attention. It's going to be, it's going to be harder right now, but um, in this environment, you know, if I talked about a global mindset, that would be it. But um, in this environment, I'm telling people look, look for the black swans because they're out there. Amazing. It's it's funny that you mentioned that because I'm actually reading a book right now called Anti Fragile, mm -hmm. which is by the same the same author that wrote Black Swan. And I mean, he's talking about exactly the same thing, you know, <laughs> look for those moments, embrace them because those are the difficult ones, but those are the ones that are going to make you grow and be better. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if um, I've spoken to companies that like are waiting for business to come back, it's like it's not coming back and it's not going to come yeah. back for some certain period of time. And so you better start thinking about, you know, again, your vision, your values, how you're going to execute, how you're going to be differentiated in doing that, and what risks are you going to take? Um, it's going to be an interesting next three, six, nine months. Yeah, definitely. I mean, our black For swan sure. happened like 40 days ago. We just published about it. Uh, it was like we were really scared of that. We were about to go out, out of business. Um, from that situation, we were able to pivot um, and change our, the, the way that we operate and just like dive in fully into the things that we believe and it turned out to be the biggest ever month the biggest month that we ever had so please follow jerry's advice um we did that without knowing that he was going to give that advice uh <laughs> so well, that's amazing uh jerry thank you so much for being on the show thanks for having me this was fun guys Ah, we, we love that you guys, that you loved it. So <laughs> we might have to do a second time. Uh, so, so, so much, so much fun to talk to you, Jerry, like always. And I want to encourage people to actually reach out to Jerry and send him a message. 
for yes. a book recommendation because he gives pretty good book recommendations. <laughs> yes. Guys, with that, I like to read. Yeah, big time. Like his big library. <laughs> uh, he, he, next time he comes on, he has to tell us a story about the library and what happened with the library and, and all that. So, uh, <laughs> intellectual curiosity, man. Yes. With that, guys, thank you so much for being on the show. Please, please, please do not forget to subscribe. Hit smash that subscribe button. Follow us right. on social media at the Biz Rosco and uh, give Jerry a visit at provenchaos.com. Thank you guys so much. I will see you on the next episode.